Well, hi, everybody. It's David George Brook, that gratitude guy with my good friend, Mickey Spear. Mickey, say hello. Hey, everybody. It's so good to be here, David. Thank you so much. What an absolute honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are here to talk about the 10-point mental health assessment that Mickey and I put together. And what really kind of got us going on this is when you need to, when you decide when you need to have help for yourself, how do you decide and who do you go to and so forth? So we put together this 10 point mental health assessment and Mickey, tell them about the acronym that we came up for this. Yeah, absolutely, David. So we came up with the acronym Brain Peace. And if you don't mind showing them that PDF on what that would look like, and this is going to be available to all of you. Just the link is in the comment section. So please download it. This is such an important thing for both David and I. I focus a lot on the grief world. And I know David's on the gratitude world. They're all tied together. But I've lost uh, several people to suicide. And I know lots of people who are struggling with depression and anxiety. And there's a lot of questions around and what I, is what I'm feeling normal or should I go to the doctor? And I think people have sometimes hesitate too long to go to the doctor. And so David and I just wanted to create a quick 10 point assessment for all of us, whether you're feeling healthy or, or not so healthy, to be able to check in and remember that our mind is important and it's worth taking care of. And so I'll, I won't spoil it, but we wanted to just um, offer this to our fans because we believe so much in the power of taking care of your mental health. And I think the term brain peace does a great job kind of summarizing that. Excellent. And just to remind everybody too, Mickey and I are not doctors, but we just feel this is something that's an assessment that you can go through and check and sort of go through these 10 different steps in brain peace. And then after you've done those, if you're still having a difficult time, definitely see your healthcare provider. So brain peace, as we said, and let's start out with a B. The B is be mindful. Mickey, be mindful. What do we mean by that? Oh my gosh. It means deep breathing. It means taking out walks in nature, just being quiet. It means meditating and being in prayer. If you are religious, that's kind of what I'm thinking of is this really being present in the moment. How about you, David? What do yeah, you so think? I about would agree with all those things and also add something I think is very important is meditation. So much of the time, Mickey just said, be present, which is so important. But meditation has been proven over and over again to be such an absolute great aspect for our brains. It gives us a break and takes the foot off the gas pedal and lets our brain kind of relax a little bit. So, so that's the B. So the R is restrict screen time. And Mickey, a little bit about that. Oh, my goodness. I could talk about this for an hour, but I won't. When we, we live in a 24-7 365, 100 mile an hour world. And if you allow it, you will be swept up into that whirlwind. And the funniest part is that's all from the screen. And I've got my phone on me right here. I think we all have our phones on us all the time. But it's really important that we discipline ourselves and remember, we don't have to be part of the insanity. In fact, it's, it's for our own good that we step back from it. Because you can get lost in that world um, of screen time, whether it's just a fun TV show and all of a sudden six hours have gone by. And you're like, I was supposed to do my chores today. Or it's getting sucked into the media and getting sucked into that negativity. And then you will feel your anxiety just start to go up, up and up. And that's all because we allow too much leverage um, of screens in our life. And, and it's so true. You have the iPhone once a week, I get a little message that shows how much screen time I've had. And I thought, gosh, that's only the iPhone. There's the tablet, there's the television, there's other aspects of, of technology that people use their computers at work. And of course your laptop or whatever it might be desktop. So really restricting that mm -hmm. is very important. So that's the R. The A is an attitude of gratitude. And I will start off on this one because I am that gratitude <laughs> guy. And gratitude is so important. What does gratitude do? Gratitude helps you to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. And as I've said many, many times, gratitude turns what you have into enough. And I even have a gratitude journal, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal that you write in every single day. It's so important. There's a little saying at the top that says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. And there's something about writing in that that's so important. So, so your thoughts on gratitude? Mickey? 
oh my, you're the expert. But I, <laughs> I second everything you said. One of my favorite quotes um, of all time is, it is not happiness that makes us grateful. It is gratefulness that makes us happy. Oh, that's good. And and it's just like, oh my gosh, the more I remember that, the more I'm like, okay, count my blessings, count my blessings, count my blessings. And my mood goes up. So important. So important. So important. One of my books is called Happiness Starts with Gratitude. And I think it's hard to be happy truly mm -hmm. without gratitude. So that's the A. The I, increase sleep. Thoughts on that, Mickey? Man, we can say it a million times, but it's, it's up to you to be able to actually put it into practice. Seriously, your brain needs seven to eight hours a night, seven to eight hours a night, and it's consistent. It's not a bank. You can't dip back into the past and say, oh, well, I slept really well on Saturday, so it's okay if I sleep terribly the rest of the week. Unfortunately, consistency is key, whether it's waking up around the same time, going to bed around the same time, but getting up seven to eight hours, and everyone's different, um, but I, I would be shocked if you need less than six and a half. So, so don't say, oh, I must just be that weird outlier who only needs five hours of sleep a night. You're probably not. You probably need seven to eight hours like the rest of us. It's so true. And then I learned recently at a seminar about how the, he used the analogy of the brain is like a dishwasher at night. It gets to clean itself out and get rid of the toxins that mm. are built up during the day and make the new chemicals for the next day. So anybody that gets less than six or seven hours is really uh, cheating themselves of the proper nutrients mm. and brain chemicals that you need for the next day. And the last aspect, B-R-A-I-N is N, no negative people. Mickey, thoughts? Oh my gosh, this is a tough one. You can't always choose your family, but you can choose how much time you spend with people, right? And if you, and this is not to say that you should not confront in peace because relation, true relationships, right? True relationships involve overcoming hurdles together and, and saying, hey, you hurt my feelings here and, and listening when they say, hey, you hurt my feelings here and, and coming to that place of, um, forgiveness and humbleness. That's what a real relationship is. So we're not saying don't do that. However, if you know somebody in your life who is consistently a victim, consistently not caring about your needs, consistently saying your dreams aren't worth chasing, demanding so much of you, that's not fair. That's not a relationship, right? That is very much them taking from you. And it's, it's, it's okay to cut them out. And in fact, you're going to be so much happier when you do, there's actually a lot of articles out there called breaking up with friends. Mm. And you should look it up if you need to do that, because it's, it's hard, but you don't have to have a big blowout fight. It's simply saying, I don't think we should be friends anymore. And that's such a tough conversation. But you will be so much happier when you stop trying to please these people. Um, and that's another part of it, I'm sure it's people pleasing. Um, you're going to just be a huge weight is going to be off of your shoulders. Well, and what I, do you think, David? I totally, I totally agree. And I think about the decisions that people make. One of the things I talk about with gratitude is that every day you wake up, you get out of your bed on the left side or the right side, positive, yeah. negative, up, down, grateful, ungrateful, whatever it might be. You get to choose. It's your choice. Nobody else makes that choice for you. So you also get to choose who you hang out with. You hang out with negative people. There's a, a, a comment all the time about your, the, your income is the average of your five closest friends and the mm -hmm. next next few several years, but it's also, you're known by the company you keep. You hang out with a bunch of bad apples. Yeah. You're going to end up being a bad apple yourself. So make that choice. So, so there's our acronym for brain. So let's move into peace. And the P is for passions and hobbies. Mickey. Oh, and the best part of this, David, is there's so many interconnected pieces, right? So passions and hobbies, I would say ties really, really well into the R of restricting screen time. We've kind of turned into a culture where the most interesting thing about ourselves is what we watch. And it's like, that's fine. And there's a time and a place to watch TV. But man, like we are created to create and we are created to be passionate about something. For me, it's grief. For David, it's gratitude. But then it goes beyond that. It's the hobbies, the things that there's no monetary value and you're just doing them because you love them and it makes your soul sing. And I think so many people have lost that. They have, they've forgotten that they like to paint. They've forgotten that they, they enjoy, um, you know, all the things. I can't even think of them because uh, there's so many, uh, but you're unique. 
you are created to do exactly what you specifically enjoy. And that's not the same as someone else. Like, for example, I'm a musician. I love to write and produce music. That's my side hobby. Other people have zero interest in that. And they might be really good at painting, which I am terrible at. And I have no real desire to be better at that because I just don't care about painting in that sense. So everyone is unique and you will be happier when you recognize your uniqueness and you lean in to your uniqueness um, and really just do what blossoms your soul. And I, I agree, of course. And I think also one of the modules I teach is find yourself, find your passion, find mm. your purpose. And I think everybody wants to find that passion. And I think once you have a great connection with yourself and then you have a great connection with your passion, you're probably going to find your purpose. Mm. And so that's why I think the passions and hobbies is so important. It's something to put yeah. your mind into. It's something you really enjoy. A lot of, they say 80% of the people in the country hate their jobs. So if somebody doesn't like a job that they spend 40 or 50 hours a weekend, look for forward oh to that God. passion, that hobby that you can express yourself. And that can also help with areas around mental health. So the E in peace is exercise every day. Mickey. Oh my gosh. And David, you are the like picture of this in the dictionary. So I'll let you kind of take it, but it's just really important. Your body releases endorphins, which is good for your brain when we exercise. And the best part is it doesn't have to be CrossFit break, you know, breaking sweat for three hours a day. Um, it, it's our culture's obsessed with like hyper going super far in the workout direction, but you don't have to be able to run a mile under, you know, four minutes in order to exercise. So exactly. I would just say, find a way to move that is sustainable, that is enjoyable and then do it. <laughs> That's the important exactly. thing is just put it on the calendar. <laughs> and all sorts of exercise are good. There's not really necessarily good and bad exercise, if you will. But I think one of the yeah. classic ones is walking. And I started out when I got mm -hmm. a Fitbit, you know, they say measure what matters. And so I got a Fitbit, it keeps track of the steps. And I started out doing 10,000 steps a day and then moved up to 12, now 15. And now I typically do 18 to 20 to sometimes 25,000 steps in a day, which is closer to eight to 10 miles. But it's so important. It's not only the exercise, but then you can multitask. I can listen to podcasts. I can listen to books on Audible. I can make notes on my phone. I can shoot videos. I can call friends. So there's all these things you can be doing while you're exercising, but it is so good for your brain. And many books I've read to get into the age that I am for somebody who's more of a senior is this idea that the number one thing, if you did nothing else is exercise every day. So, so important and so mm -hmm. good for you. So, so that's the E P E A A acknowledge emotions. That's a specialty of Mickey's. Oh, that is a specialty of mine. So without going too far into it, my mom passed away when I was 13 and I spent the better part of the decade avoiding acknowledging emotions. I pretended I was fine. And that's really the catalyst for why I do my show, my music, is I just love to help people lean into their emotions, specifically grief, but all emotions. And so like David has his gratitude book, I've got my, oh, I don't know if you can see it right here, mm -hmm. um, my, my book, which is also a workbook that helps people lean into losses that they had. Odds are you have unprocessed grief. Most people do. Um, and that, that's coming out in other ways. Like in my own life, I was collapsing emotionally. I was crying for what appeared to be no reason. And I couldn't figure out why did this one comment rock my whole day? And I realized a lot of it was because I had unprocessed emotions. Mm. So man, leaning into those emotions and giving them space journaling like david said writing is so therapeutic man it's so important so if you want be sure to grab a copy of my book off of amazon we'll make sure both of our books are linked in the comments but that goes beyond grief too right anytime you're feeling something the best thing you can do for yourself is to pause and say okay i'm feeling angry why what's behind that why and then if you just kind of why your way to the center you're going to feel a lot better and I, and I think the key word there is acknowledge, be aware of them. Don't mm -hmm. sweep it under the carpet or put it in the closet or whatever. Allow it to be right. what it is, which is emotion. You know, there's all, we all have good and bad days. Life is so much like a roller coaster, and there's going to be good and bad days. The yeah. good days are great. The bad days aren't so much fun. You want to be back when they're good again, but the bad days are when you learn the most about yourself and about life in yeah. many, in many, many cases. And so it's important. And one of the things that we said, the 10 point mental health assessment, this is 
10 things brain piece for you to go through and check off all these boxes to see. And if you're still having a tough day, do you call your health professional? That's definitely a possibility. Or you know what it might be? Get to tomorrow because to generally tomorrow will be better. Maybe it's just to getting yourself up and, and getting to bed early or whatever. And nine times out of 10, the next day is better. So very important, especially the acknowledge part. And then C, community connection. And I'll start this one off where I think in the same books that I read that talked about exercise for seniors and exercise for anybody, but they talked about the benefit of community. And they used, again, in my age range, the examples of people that live by themselves or in nursing home or senior mm -hmm. centers. And it was so tough and they were so disconnected to other people and they were yeah. lonely and there's this sense of community. It's like I mentioned to somebody recently, like going to a movie is so much more fun when this movie theaters. And of course we've had COVID-19, but when and they were all filled and everybody's laughing together. But can you imagine being in that movie theater by yourself? It would be really strange just kind of laughing and you look around, nobody's laughing. So, so your thoughts on community, Mickey. That's a beautiful metaphor, David. I've never heard that, that movie theater mentality of why community is so important. That's such a beautiful, beautiful metaphor. I, I would say, again, these are all interconnected in, in a sense. And in the same way that no negative people is important and, you know increasing your time with positive people is so important i think one of the things our brain loves to tell us is that we are alone that nobody cares that our problems aren't big enough to, to talk about and those are lies those are all lies but when we buy into them we isolate and um when we are isolated um that's that's really when bad things can take hold so I would just say, you know, think about who you care about and come up with a plan and say, okay, I really care about, you know, my dad, my, my sister. So how can I lean into those relationships more? Can I get something on the calendar to consistently talk with them more? And, and community could also be volunteering, you know, pick a cause that you're passionate about, see how you can get on the board there or something now. And I know COVID-19 has made it hard, but there's so many virtual events happening there are ways to plug in and, and you just have to find them. Um, so that, that's what I would say is community is both the people in your life that you choose to be with, but also the volunteering uh, within your community that's gonna really help you find that purpose. It's really, really helpful. And I think too, that old line about uh, an idle mind is the devil's playground. Boy, I'll tell you, when your yeah. mind is by itself and it's just, it, it wanders and it goes places that you may not want to yeah. go. So that's where community can help. And finally, P-E-A-C-E, -E, our last E, eliminate junk and other inputs. Eliminate junk food, I should say, and other inputs. And your thoughts on that, Mickey? You know what, David? We live in a culture where our food is oftentimes cheap. It is addictive by design. And, and then we feel like garbage afterwards. We can't figure out why, but it was designed inherently to make you feel like garbage so you would eat more of it. And that goes for junk food, that goes for drugs, right? That goes for um, inappropriate content people consume, uh, whether that's media or anything else. Um, and, and when something kind of gives you that high, that sugar high perhaps is maybe the right way of describing it. And that could be from drugs and from other things too. Um, if it is not rooted in a healthy place, and I think science would uh, argue sugar is definitely not rooted in a healthy place, you're going to be craving it. Your whole body gets sick from it, and it's going to make you want to come back for more and more and more, and it's going to overcompensate for other areas. So you're going to be sad, and immediately your brain's going to go, well, what about that cookie dough you have in the fridge? That's going to give you a quick little high, and it will, and it will give you a quick little high but then you're going to come down. And so I just think this is so, this eliminate junk food, it's not about shaming you or saying you can never have a treat again. It's just understanding that these are bad inputs and you can only put so many bad inputs into a calculator before the whole thing crumbles. And we just have to be aware of that when we consume, could be food, could be drugs, could be anything else. Um, that's just not good for us. And if you feel like you are starting to get down that addictive, path it could be food it could be content you're consuming talk to a doctor like right addiction is hard to break and there are and i'm not trying to scare anybody but if you are addicted to something all of this goes out the window because you're that that's in the driver's seat so if you oh. feel like you can't stop eating junk food and that every time you're sad you're going to the fridge or using the drug or alcohol to kind of compensate 
for those emotions, that's a legitimate problem. And it's a legitimate reason to go see a doctor. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think just we I think we all know what is good and bad for us. And so sometimes we just have to eliminate the things that are negative influences and whether that's junk food or negative inputs at ever whatever it might be. I think inside we know. But so the whole key here, take the 10 point mental health assessment. And as I showed you here earlier, the whole idea is if you're having a tough day, go down and think about brain peace. Well, am I being mindful? Am I restricting screen time? I have an attitude of gratitude? Do I increase my sleep? Am I, am I watching the no negative people? Passions and hobbies, exercise every day, acknowledge emotions, community connection, and eliminate junk food and junk inputs. And then we've added in the description a little do-it-yourself checklist or worksheet, if you will, that's got both the all 10 of these together. There they are. And this is a way for you, that'll be in the description. Mickey did a beautiful job putting this hand out together. And that'll be for you to print out and then kind of use it every day if you want, or when you're having a tough day. And the whole concept is to get, be able to go through, if I can go through the five that are brain, the five that are peace, and I'm still having a tough day, then again, I may want to consult my healthcare professional, or I may want to just get through that day and get to the next day. But that's the whole thing. These are reminders that can help us to really, really go through the check boxes. And some, some of those things can make a big difference in how your mental attitude is. Mickey? Absolutely. I was just going to say, David, you hit the nail on the head. This, my, my, my prayer for you guys is that as you download this PDF, you can go through and say, okay, what does it look like for me to be mindful? What does restricting screen time, what, what would that look like for me? Because everybody is different. And so then on days that are a little bit harder or you're feeling disconnected or unmotivated, perhaps numb. I know I, felt, I used to feel numb a lot. You can reference back to that list and you can say, okay, what are my passions and hobbies? Have I gardened today? I love gardening. Is that, have I done any of that lately? And you might be like, oh my gosh, it's been a month since I've done any of my hobbies. And this list is something you can reference back to and be like, what exercises do I like? Um, who's in my community that I can reach out to and, and build that stronger? So that's my hope. That's my prayer. And as David, he has such a so much great content. I just look forward to getting to know all of you guys outside of this talk too. And, and thank you all for listening too. I very much appreciate your attention. It's a very important uh, subject to Mickey and to me. And as we wrap up here, Mickey, how can people reach you? Yes, if you don't mind, if you can see right up there, head to my website, mickeyspear.com. I have a brand new single that dropped recently, and I would love for you to see that as well as get your free workbook for that. It's a candle lighting ceremony that you can do on days that are hard when you're missing your person who passed away. Um, I do a weekly show. I put out music. I, I just do a lot of things kind of surrounding grief and leaning into those emotions. So I'd love for you to join me live on Tuesday nights on Facebook. But head to my email list because I'll make sure I send all those replays, the show notes, and all free things like this PDF. I'll make sure I include in that too, um, to you guys. And so I would love to be in touch with you any way possible. And if there's ever a loss that you have that you have questions about, reach out to me. I've interviewed dozens of people, dozens of organizations, and I'd love to connect you however I can. Excellent. And we will have all that contact information in the description as well yeah. as the PDF or a link for the PDF. And my name is David George Brook, That Gratitude Guy, and my contact information will be in there as well at That Gratitude Guy, if you will, or That Gratitude Guy, www.thatgratitudeguy.com. <laughs> And David at That Gratitude Guy. So thank you all for listening. We really, really want to be of service and help. And this is just one way we hope that if you take that 10-point mental health checklist, it'll help you to maybe uncover some things you hadn't thought of. So Mickey, thank you so much. It's great to see you. And thanks for all the great work you did on this project. Oh, my absolute honor, David. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. You bet. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Take care.